Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So my name is Paulo and today we're going to be talking about uh, the main challenges of actually working and living abroad. Okay, so uh, previous to this one, I actually built up a video while in Paris uh, about the top 10 lessons that I actually got from working and living abroad on my last 10 years. Okay, so today I just thought to myself, okay, so I'm going to be focusing then also on sharing what are the main challenges that most likely you will come across if you are looking to uh, study abroad, uh, move for whatever reason, like for instance, work, leaving, um, at the end, just going for an adventure, it does not matter. It's possible that you're going to come across uh, a few challenges, okay? And today I'm just going to be sharing then a few of those challenges and also a few of the solutions okay please be mindful that those are actually tainted by my own culture my own perspective of life and my own experience as well but nevertheless i think it's important uh, to share so that you can actually prep yourself and be much more successful than i was okay so with that said uh please give it a thumbs up to the video okay it's important for me it's also important for the youtube algorithm okay and on top of that, please feel free to join me on this journey, subscribe, okay? And tune for more info around work and life, uh, CRM and marketing technology, and also tech consulting. With that said, stick around if you wanna know more. Okay, starting with uh, the first one, okay? So uh, the first one I would say that is language, okay? And of course, uh, if you are coming from uh, a country that already speaks the language of your destination, let's say, or of your destiny in terms of country, that would not count, of course. If you are British and if you are moving to the US or something like that, it does not matter. Or if you are Portuguese like myself and you are moving to Mozambique or Brazil, it does not count as much because you speak the language, okay? But nevertheless, do not underestimate the importance of the language and if you do not speak the language can be really a barrier okay so i'm gonna give you my personal example so on my uh moving away from portugal my next country was the netherlands and dutch is difficult my friends doesn't matter what you're gonna be saying to me on the comments it's difficult okay so uh, if you're coming from a, a portuguese background then you are gonna go into actually learning Dutch, it's difficult. It will take uh, uh, time, okay? So, but with that said, um, my advice would be for you not to shy away from any uh, difficult conversations that you may have, okay? It's important for you uh, to engage on those. Does not matter if you actually do mistakes, it's just part of the learning process, okay? Uh, aside from that as well, I would say for you to take a course, um, a language course that is, so that you actually be much more um, uh, free and much more relaxed about it and actually enjoy your um, experience in terms of working, living or traveling abroad. abroad sorry. Okay, with that said, this is around my first challenge. Stick around for challenge number two. Okay, let's talk about this one. It's a difficult topic, but I would say that is one that needs to be addressed. Okay, so this is all about uh, nationality and economy. And why? Because most likely this will be one of the most difficult challenges that you can actually come across. Okay, so uh, to give you a few examples of, okay, before uh, sharing those, uh, what I need to share with you is that um, your nationality carries some preconcepts, okay? And those preconcepts may have an impact on your uh, evolution, on the way people perceive you, and that may be a positive one or a negative one. Okay, so it's best for you to actually to understand that and be ready to address that with a certain degree of calm, with based on facts and if possible with humor. Okay, so with that said, I'm gonna give you a few of the examples, some of which are a bit heavy, but as said, I think that this is something that needs to be addressed. Okay, so, um, when when moving to um the netherlands one of the things that i had um that i started to feel a lot and this was not just related to myself as a portuguese but actually i would say uh broaden to southern european uh people i would say that there was this perception um that uh people were lazy uh and uh, uh non-efficient okay so 
this is something that happens you need to be mindful of this and then you need to be able to be, be capable of addressing and even educating the other person okay as much as possible okay um, a complete example of this was um, for instance uh, uh, after uh, a conversation with someone uh, this uh, same person asked me if I would like to actually to have a meeting to follow up on that after lunch okay I said perfect uh, let's do that um, what happened was that I received the meeting invitation to four o'clock okay so we are talking about uh, 12 30 around that to four o'clock okay so I was like very surprised but then I went to speak to the person and the person said ah, I was expecting for you to do the siesta okay so that is just uh, an example of pre-concepts because my friends Portuguese don't do siesta okay to start from okay but aside from that uh, what I mean is that this person was actually a very open-minded person but even then he had pre-concepts and he was trying to be most likely nice to you but at the end was it sounded a bit like strange to the other person that sits on the other side okay so this is one example then the other example will be that i started to see people that were actually doing the same working as consultants doing the same uh with the same level of talent i would say or even higher okay and they were actually receiving less than their uh colleagues okay than the colleagues from the netherlands or the colleagues from the uk and so forth okay and this once more it has to do everything around in my perspective around nationality and economy because you are coming from um, a, a weaker economy let's put it like that and therefore most likely you know less you have less uh, knowledge you are less capable and so forth okay so these are things that actually plug uh, to your or can plug let's say to yourself okay and this break concepts can actually haunt you okay so be ready for that and as I mentioned uh, address it with a certain level of calm um, meaning uh, uh, humor if possible and based on facts okay so uh, another example of this actually on the flip side okay so positive example of uh, let's say call it positive discrimination okay so I remember while um, in Belgium I had a, a Danish colleague and she came to, to me one of those days and we are having a conversation and so forth and she said to me that she was feeling that she was being uh, positively discriminated okay so this actually happens uh, and of course she's a, a brilliant person and with loads of of capacity but of course some um, carry a heavier torch than others okay this is important to uh, actually just talk uh, openly and in order to actually to address okay so I'm gonna give you another example in relation to this okay so um, I had uh, this in Belgium so I had my first year I think it was around 110% of my target the second year was around 96% of my target all good all shiny but not good enough actually to evolve to a different position okay so I had a conversation with my manager at the time and he said he recognized that a uh, uh, I was doing well but um, that was the position that was given to me and there was no expectations actually to move okay what happened then uh, two months later I moved to the UK and then I moved from a specialist position to a head position okay so with that said I jumped two positions to say so uh, in a in a space of two months was it because I was suddenly extremely uh, smart? Uh, I don't think so, okay? So was essentially because um, in the UK, my perception was different and therefore um, the way people were perceiving me were, were more, more positive, let's put it like that, okay? So those are a few examples, real examples of things that actually happened, okay? Then to talk about one uh, a bit more heavy, let's say, but nevertheless important, uh, for people to be mindful of this because some of you may think okay but this is actually happening to you because outside of your nationality you also have your ethnicity okay so I'm gonna give you an example of completely uh, opposite to that okay so this happened actually with my wife okay so we are parking the car coming from the groceries and I was just heading towards our home crossing the street and I was uh, about to go inside when I noticed that there was a guy um, I'm not sure that he was completely solid between brackets but he um, addressed my wife in Dutch and then at the time 
uh, she was not very fluent in Dutch, so both of, of us were working on international companies, essentially speaking English all day long, um, and then he continued to address her in uh, French, okay? So, uh, which she replied in English, okay? So, uh, what was the outcome of this, you may ask? So, the outcome of this was that he called her uh, a parasite, okay? That she should go back to her place, she should go back to her home and not being any uh, more in Belgium, okay? So, this was very shocking uh, at the time, even more for a person that was actually not very used to go through this kind of situation or not used at all to going through this kind of situations, um, but it happens, okay? So it's important for you to actually to be mindful of this. This has nothing to do with the country. This has nothing to do with the people because you have lovely people, but once in a while, you're gonna come across this kind of situation. So it's important for you to be mindful that this actually happens. It's important for you to know how to address it, uh, be calm, address it based on facts, and as I mentioned, with humor if possible, okay? With this said and this, taken out of the way, let's say, stick around for the next challenge. Okay, following up with the previous one, um, I'm going to be focusing now on one of the biggest challenges, I would say, at first when you start to work, that is around adapting yourself uh, towards the new way of working and even interacting while at work. Okay, so I'm gonna give you uh, some four examples, okay, so that, that hopefully will make uh, easier, or let's say to understand this. So one will be, uh, let's say, uh, it's, it's normal that you're gonna come across uh, different levels of formality, okay, in terms of the way of, of, of dressing, way of addressing someone as well. So I'm gonna give you some examples of that. Like for instance, in Portugal, it's normal that you'd call someone that has a degree, uh, an engineer or uh, a doctor, if he, is, if he or she has a degree on a specific area like business or marketing or whatever, okay? So it uh, could be also that uh, you will treat someone as an architect or something like that, okay? While, for instance, if you are comparing this uh, to, for instance, Spain, you don't do that, okay? So you just address the person by its name. Uh, in Portugal, you cannot do that, okay? So be mindful of that. You need to address the person by the title, okay? Unless you already have a good relationship with the person, okay? So another example of, of the differences between the two parties, uh, meaning between um, uh, different cultures and backgrounds and therefore the challenge for you to adapt and understand things differently is like, for instance, attitudes towards um, uh, arriving into a meeting. In Portugal, sometimes it's like more or less normal for you to give a kind of um, uh, a slack on people that arrive late up to 10 minutes, okay? You don't do that in the Netherlands, okay? So the meeting starts on time and it should end on time, okay? So it's important for you also to understand those challenges and those dif differences um, so that you are more successful on, on your day to day, okay? So another one um, to give you a, a bit of a sense of how things are different, uh, greeting people, okay? Greeting people, like for instance, in Portugal, um, you'd say, for instance, hi to everyone, and even most likely kiss someone or just giving a handshake. If you are in the Netherlands, you don't do that. You just say hi or not even that. You just go straight to your place of work, um, and just that, but you don't kiss and you don't greet anyone, okay? That's it, or the way you used to do it in Portugal, okay? Then there's another point as well that is quite funny uh, due to the differences, and of course I remember myself being like one year in of actually being used to work in the Netherlands, and suddenly it comes um, like the new year, okay? And everyone starts to kiss each other. That for me was very strange, okay? So they would never, kiss, they will never touch, let's say, but suddenly everyone starts to kiss and uh, um, giving the greetings of um, or wishing someone uh, a, a, a new year, a good new year, an amazing new year, etc. And for me it was a bit of a strange uh, situation because we don't do that at all. Okay, so of course you wish someone a good year, but you don't go there and just greet someone 
and actually spend some time actually speaking about the new year and I'll, I'll wish you all the best and so forth. Okay, so those are a few examples of the need that you need to go through in order to adapt for uh, different uh, ways of, of working out or even interacting with people at work. Okay, that's it for this one. Okay, stick around for the next one. Okay, let's go into this one. So this is all about adjusting your salary expectations and your evolution, okay? By adjusting, I do not mean that it can go only on the wrong side of the, of the curve, let's say. It could be actually on the flip side, but nevertheless, this is a challenge and you need to be mindful of that, okay? So, um, of course, you're gonna have different situations, imagine. Situation number one, if you're actually moving uh, to another country within the same company, it's likely that your salary expectations will be the same, so meaning will not be get impacted, uh, or it could be actually on the flip side, you can actually get an increase. But imagine that you are actually moving into a new country, okay, uh, and you are without a job, okay? Could be that whatever you were doing before, your skill level, uh, your knowledge does not carry the same weight, okay? Plus, it could be also be the case that on that given country, the, the level of salary is lower, okay? Um, so be mindful of that, okay? Do not expect for you to actually to be uh, actually gaining exactly the same just because you used to, do, to get that on your previous country, okay? So I'm gonna give you some examples of this, like for instance, UK versus Portugal, okay? So in the UK, uh, people do not care as much uh for your um education your background and etc um but they do care about your performance they do care about what is it that you can do or the way you actually um, drive yourself to work and drive your team as an example okay based on that you can actually get uh, a faster evolution okay while for instance if you are in portugal uh people do tend to um put a lot of weight to your level of, uh, of education, um, your knowledge, so meaning, do you have a master, do you have a PhD, do you are an engineer, are you this or are you that, okay? So that is extremely important uh, in a country such as Portugal, okay? While in the UK, not as much, okay? So it's important for you to understand that that can happen and that will have an impact on your salary expectations, okay? So stick around for the last one. Okay, last but not least, uh, to close. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about expenses. Um, expenses are indeed a challenge, okay? Most likely one of the biggest ones, okay? So what will be my advice with regards to this and based on my own experience across different countries, okay? So to start from, do your math before moving into the next country, okay? And by doing this, you should be looking at your income plus the cost of living of that country. And also on top of that, what I'll do as an advice, take a look at uh, some of the biggest uh, causes of, of cost, okay? Or driving uh, the cost higher, okay? So I'm, sp I'm talking about housing, I'm talking about kindergarten, I'm talking about transport, I'm talking about health, and I'm talking about education, okay? So I'm gonna give you some concrete examples of that so that you are mindful of what is it that I mean. Plus, on top of that, um, be mindful that uh, don't do, let's say, a, a negotiation based on your local currency, okay, on your actual currency, but actually do your negotiation on your um, local currency on the country that you're going to be moving towards, okay? So if you are uh, actually working, as an example, at the EU and someone uh, offers you a job in the UK, think in pounds, don't think in euros, okay? Or vice versa as well. If you are moving from the UK into the EU, think in euros, don't think in pounds, because uh, you're gonna be receiving in pounds and you're gonna be spending in pounds, or you're gonna be receiving in euros and you're gonna be spending in euros. So it's different, okay? So then the other thing that I would say as an advice and based on my own experience, it's like, for instance, when I was talking about cost of housing, okay? Like for instance, in the UK, you're gonna have a high income, most likely, but your cost is gonna be high, okay? On the housing part, uh, it could be that, for instance, you're gonna be spending like 
1,300 pounds, 1,700 pounds, 2,000 pounds, 2,500 pounds, so a month. So you need to be mindful or even higher than that, okay? So you need to be mindful of that, okay? So kindergarten, the same. Like for instance, if you're gonna go to the Netherlands, you're gonna be spending between 1,200 to 1,500 uh, euros a month. Um, in the UK, 1,300 pounds a month. So those are some of the things that you need to be mindful of, okay? before you actually decide to do your move, okay? Um, so, another point that I would like just to underline while closing on this one as well, is that, um, as an advice as well, uh, talk to the local people, okay? That will be my last advice, okay? So, be vigilant whenever you take your decision to move, okay? Because most likely you're gonna find people, uh, and this is a bit of a challenge as well, that are happy to uh, show you houses that are much higher than the normal average cost uh, of that given place, okay? So, talk to, to the locals, they will know, they will be the best ones to advise you. Okay, with that said, I'm closing this video, okay, so, uh, Give it a thumbs up, subscribe and join me on this journey uh, and then also share, do share this because I think it's important for people to get as much, um, let's say, experience and knowledge around this topic. Okay, and that's it guys. Enjoy your day. Cheers. Bye-bye.